So what is the role of an adult? An adult in this case we are talking of a caregiver. You working on a caregiver, what is your role? Or the care provider, what is your role in supervising? And risk assessment. So we have talked about risk assessment so many times. So today I don't want us to really go on risk assessment. We will talk about it, we will discuss it, but we will not take too much time. We are also going to look at safety and security procedures. What are the safety and security procedures when we are supervising kids? What are some of the safety and security procedures? We will also look at safety and children on an outing. If you are planning for an outing, what are some of the things that you need to consider? Especially in supervising when you are supervising the children. What are some of the things? So I want to look at, I want to put on tips for planning an outing. Sometimes the tips for planning an outing, usually I think they, they take stages. They usually look at them as stages for planning an outing. But I do not want to look at them as stages. Because they are not really stage one, two, three, one. There are just things that you can do when you, you can look out for when you are planning an outing. So that's why I put tips for planning. But sometimes someone can ask you what are the stages for planning. So I put them on stitch because I get to like I feel like the stage is too strong because it's like the stage one, stage two, the stage three. But we can discuss that as well. What is the best thing that you can do when you plan an outing on the second thing they can do? Then they just come. So we are going to begin by looking at a question.
they are going to be sick. The kids will not be sick. But they always miss them to play. So make sure that you are talking to them. Maybe you are using play activities just to teach them how to So you can educate them. Watch out. You can also put up labels, right? So uh, uh, you make sure that you put up labels at the, around the school. Labels or messages. Messages about the school. You put up labels or messages about the school. Now remember, this is the health and safety right? So whatever you Make sure that you're contributing, you're thinking about health and So, there are a lot of ways through which you can do it. You can educate as it has been contributed. You can also put up your work in the classroom, which is a area of interest. And while you're making it fun, so that the children should know. They are very, uh, they are legal, they are under price. They need to be. Um, the message has to be in a way that they understand it. Alright? It's different from someone who is older. You guys know, you, have, you know the signs. This is dangerous, this is, you know all the signs. But for the kids, sometimes they might not know. So it's important that you, you put up labels, but you also teach them what the labels mean. So, this is the one thing I would say. Uh, it was a company to the patient. So thank you for your contribution. I just want to talk about it before we go to the next So we are looking at supervision. We are looking at supervision. In this context, supervision means within sight of hearing of the member of staff and company. It means the child is within sight, you are able to see the child or you are able to hear that child at four times. When the children come to school, remember, as caregivers or as providers, we are responsible for the children. It's different with you guys because you guys will know that you are adults, you are old, so we don't have to be losing out on any time. But for the children, they are under sight. The parents, one of the things that the parents are going to consider when they are coming to explore their child is the own part. We are asking about safety. So, what are your safety procedures? We are asking about those things. So, you need to make sure that safety is priority. No matter what, safety should be a priority. Because when they are coming in and they are going out, they have to come in the same and go out the same. You don't have to, you know, imagine if it's a school every week. Then you put a child in the Will you be able to take your child there? No. So you need to consider So when you are supervising, you are supervising that the child is within sight. You are able to see the child. And then you are able to hear the child at all costs. That is why most of the, uh, they are the, the, what, the, uh, the schools, the preschools, most of them, they do not have one teacher only in the classroom. They will have a teacher who is the main teacher, but they also have assistants. Alright? So the assistants are there to make sure that they also help to while you're teaching, they will check if that child is there, if that child is heavy, if that child, you know, doing this, they are assisting. So actually supervision by staff is key to maintaining the health, safety and welfare of children because that is the whole essence. The parents are going to be sent their children to school. They need a safe duty, safe duty, safe for their, uh, for the welfare of their children. So make sure that indoors and outdoors, the supervision are for time. In, in indoors, just make sure that there are walls, you have got final, you have got, you, you are able to see each other. So in a classroom like this one, you have got walls around it, and then you have got three windows just to make sure that you are able to see everyone. And also, the way you are setting up your classroom, it should be in a way that you are able to look at every child. You cannot have a classroom like this one and then put a whole key, alright, or put a whole key so that you are not able to see the kids that are behind. You need to make sure that it is an open, uh, an open class where you are able to. 
Bible. What is that child doing? Is that child putting a pen in his mouth? What is it? So it's, it's part of the, of the job. You're making sure that the children are, you are able to see them. Outdoors is the same thing. When they are out, make sure you're also there to supervise. Right? If you're not there, that the teacher at this time is there to supervise. Because the moment that child lets their legs or, uh, or something happens to them, you'll be answered the question. Alright? You'll be answered the question. Right? So you don't need to be like uh, answering, like you don't need that bad invitation. So the outdoor play area should be secure and safe, and safety safe, uh, also to ensure that children are not in this area without other. So make sure that it is safe. The outdoor area, make sure that it is safe. Especially when you have access to the road, just like we have it here, just make sure it is safe. There will be anyone coming in and you will be able to. So it takes us to the messages, the messages that you put around in the class or that you put around in the school to make sure that the children are safe. So these are the primary mode of communication to make sure children are in a safe environment. So you put up messages, you put up labels so that when they are ready, they should make sure that when they read them, they should be able to you know. Or when they see them, they should know this is better or this is uh, something. The, uh, the message is the late children and teachers know about their surrounding conditions which may prove harmful to them. So the message is, or the labels, uh, the whole effort of putting up labels is just to make sure that the teachers, even the children, they know that the surrounding effect. So these are some of the messages that uh, I should put around the school. So for example, you can put around it's no smoking, right? You put a cigarette, you know they're not smoking, uh, they're not smoking what side, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so put around the not smoking zone, chase a feet somewhere, it should be somewhere like this, uh, like it is accessible, especially with the teacher, send up a substance, waste flow, toxic material, fire equipment, you won't enter. So, one to be mindful that these are children and the some of them don't think they know how to eat. But when you teach them in the classroom, you need time that you need to understand that this is what, this is weight, you know, uh, this is not enter. So you teach them the science in the class. Maybe the the class teach them the science and then put them around in the classroom that they are not outside. So that when they are playing even outside, when they see the science, they are able to they are able to interpret the message. So uh, there are a lot of messages that can be put around, but just make sure that the messages are put around in the classroom, but you also put them outside the class. So I have an example of the messages, but you cannot just put up the messages without interpreting it. Because the kids are not going to be this. They are going to see this. Mm -hmm. Alright? So they will see it and then they will know that this is not pushing. There is the first stage, there is the fire entry, good water, then the other one, I think the other one is the first stage. Sleep by the surface, wash your hands, you know, areas where you have, where you need to wash them, make sure that you put, you really put a minor. Stand in line, nicely. See, kids, kids are different from us. We don't listen. I don't know why. Maybe it was me, I and I don't know why. We don't listen. But the kids are like, you tell them being alive. And maybe after 
boy, the kids are going to play their child. Mm -hmm. They want to see their mother, their mother is the only that will be scared of the teacher. Mm -hmm. So the kids at the moment they say, stand in the night, in the night, they are going to be the night. But for you guys, if you say, in the night, there will be people coming from the time, they will be there, 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 they
going to jump off. So there are four here, but you can add them. Alright? You can add them. 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 So the first one is setting up and managing the environment. So you need to have the skill in setting up and managing the environment. How the environment is set up and support or in the active supervision. Right? As I said earlier on, the classroom it has to be a classroom that is also done so that it carries to you cannot block, not block so that you don't see the people. You make sure that they are visible wherever they are, whatever you see them, so that you can see the So make sure that the way you set up and the way you manage the involvement, you have that skill of setting up and managing. And sometimes when it helps when you're when you're when you're teaching the children, when you're playing with them, then ideas come to you. Right? Because remember, most of the time the children are not going to sit on the chair like this, they sit down on the mat. So when you're teaching them, when you're doing to them ideas that come, how do I arrange this to make it successful and make it to make it uh, so that they are able to provide them. If you're putting them in groups, don't put a, 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 a group that is too big. You're not going to be able Make sure maybe you put the smaller, smaller groups so that you see the five things they are doing, what they are supposed to be doing. So you put, you set up the classroom or you write the environment in a way that you are able to supervise. So, for example, uh, there are examples here. For example, a large job construction, tent, or a piece of furniture in the middle of the room. That is not the way, right? So you're putting up, they're sitting down uh, on the mat, and then you put a big piece of furniture between the, between the groups of the children. That is the way. Because you're not going to use them. Wherever you're sitting, you're not going to use them separately. So make sure that whether you're sitting or whether you're standing, you're able to see. The goal is the size and the right? So you start, uh, you see them, and you visit them. Sometimes you can have, uh, uh, you can have the caregivers, the figures that are maybe blind, but you should be able to visit them. Right? So it's important that you see them or you visit them or both. The second skill is positioning. So how are you going to position yourself in the classroom? Or how you're going to position yourself outside when they are playing outdoors. That is also that is matter as well. Right? Because it is important that you are visible. Like you said earlier, only it is important here that you are visible. Position yourself that you are the able to do. They will fall down, they will get there, they will go on someone to run. That's what you can do. And they may go to time. Uh, I did this, or somebody did that. So they, will, they want to see someone all the time. So make sure that you're you positioning yourself in a way that you're visible to them. Whenever they fall, they come and report. And they go down, so I did this and I did that. Because that is going to at least uh, give you the, the proper view of where they are. You are able to see them. And then that is also going to help you. That is also going to make sure that uh, help you make sure that they are all within sight. You are all you are, you are able to hear them, and then you are you are supervising supervising them all. So positioning is also a skill that you should have. Position them in a way that they are visible. Whether you are sitting down, or whether you are standing up.
follow and make it easier for the society. So, for example, if they are playing, especially outside, they will go and play, they will go on the screen for the ball to see, so they will play that, they will go on the slide, they will, play, they will get that. Make sure that you are visible, that you are there, channel it, that you are there and wherever they are standing somewhere. If there is water somewhere or they are playing, if there is water play, there is someone there already standing somewhere. That is what is called shadow. So wherever they go, wherever the child is going, they have to be somewhere. Right? And then I can take this to very important. You cannot do all of this because remember the thing I would ask this to be supervision. So you cannot do all of this without being attentive. That's what active supervision is all about. You have to be attentive. You have to know what they are doing. You have to know how they, what they are working on. You have to be attentive. There are times when sometimes you have ever been in classrooms where you think the teacher is not putting on you. Or you think the teacher is not seeing you, right? Mm -hmm. And then you do your own thing. But then the teacher is going to mention your name and then you wonder how is she going to do what I'm doing? The moment we are here, we are paying, we are even paying attention to you, we are paying attention to you. So we know that this person is listening, this person is in this class, this person is on the side, even though they are here, this person is somewhere, maybe the weekend is in the same world. We know the world of the same class. It was the wrong way to get right? Yes. So we know that you know, they are tired. Sometimes when I say let's go to have a break, because I know that you don't need to be just like it. That's why I say let's take it. But you, you have to make sure that you're paying attention. For the many people here will not be technologically advanced, but if you go in the other countries where they are, like, you know, they are advanced. They have got the, they have the computer in the classroom on each day. The uh, kids are always on the computer. Some of them will come with their, with their earphones in the classroom. So you have to make sure that you are attentive. You are making sure that this one is paying attention to what you are doing. Because you want to, be, at the end of the day, that they are coming away. So you, you want to be at least. Make sure that they are listening or they are doing what you are telling them to do. Any comments so far? So there are four skills I've put at four, but you can think of more, alright? You can think of what I have to do like as a child care, especially you yourself as a professional uh, care treatment. What are uh, some of the skills that you need to demonstrate in a class, especially a class of three to five years old? What are the skills that you need to make sure that you possess so that the children are supervised? So we don't want to have this where you know each other.